Today is Trinamic 2130 Stepper Drivers, take two. Last time I showed you how to cable up and configure TMC2130 stepper drivers so that you can use some of their features like stealth chop and in stopless homing. But that configuration was lacking. What it didn't have was an LCD screen and an SD card reader. And that's because by default, the pins that you use to communicate with the 2130 also support the LCD screen and SD card reader. So today I'm going to walk you through a configuration where you can have the best of both worlds. You have LCD and SD card support and 2130s. Now I am assuming that you've already seen the original video and if you haven't you can check that out up here. We're going to walk through this step by step. This is all enabled by the Marlin 1.1.9 software SPI. That's how we're able to relocate some of these pins. So now let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you how to configure the hardware. So here's the configuration where we left off on the last video. We were using all of the AUG3 pins to communicate with our TMC2130s and we were unable to use the LCD screen because of that. After the last video, I did go back and make a wire harness to hook all this up. It doesn't look great, but it's a lot better than the breadboard method we did previously. And this is what it looks like with everything all hooked up. We've got our two loose wires here going over to our in-stop pins for X and Y. And you see we have the AUGS 3 almost completely populated, as well as a few in AUGS 2. And that's what we need to change to be able to use our LCD and our SD card. So the goal for this video is to use the software to relocate all these pins on AUGS 3 over to AUGS 2. And this also includes SPI communication. So when we're done, I'm hoping to have something that looks a little bit more like this instead. And we should be able to move all these pins inside Marlin. So here's the final plug configuration that I came up with. I pretty much just left all of the AUGS 3 pin locations and just moved everything to AUGS 2. And then I relocated those two AUGS 2 pins. So there's seven pins in total. And with all those pins moved to AUGS 2, you have plenty of room for your LCD smart adapter. Here's a before diagram to make this just a little bit clearer. This is how it was when we first configured it. And here's a diagram of what the pins look like now. Hopefully this makes enough sense that you can repeat what I did with this wire harness. Now I know it isn't really clear on how I wired this up, me just showing you pictures of this board and not walking through it step by step as I pin it out. But I think with the diagrams and us walking through the Marlin configuration step by step, it's going to make a lot more sense. So let's get into Marlin and get that configured. For this video, I'm using Marlin Bug Fix 1.1.9. This is just 1.9, but all the stuff that's been fixed since the official release. I don't know that there were any issues in 1.1.9, but I thought I'd grab this one just to make sure we were successful. So we'll open up the Marlin INO file. You do need the IDE. Link's in the description. And if you're installing 2130s, you need the 2130 library. So go to Sketch, go to Include Library, Manage Libraries, and just search for 2130. This is the library you need right here. I already have it installed. 2.5.0 seems to work just fine. So we'll start in configuration.h. We need to tell the configuration we're using 2130s. So we'll scroll down. And here's the stepper driver section. We're going to uncomment all the four drivers that we use. X, Y, Z, and extruder 0. And then we're going to change A4988, which is the default, to TMC2130. And it should look like this. And something I forgot to mention, if you're using in-stopless homing, you want to make sure that your in-stop inverting is set to true for both X and Y. And the only other thing we need to talk about in configuration.h is the LCD screen and the SD card. Now for this configuration, we're going to have an LCD screen and an SD card reader. But if you're using the stock configuration and not moving any pins, you won't be able to do this. So again, if you're using that stock configuration, you want to make sure you leave the SD support commented out. But we're going to use a different one, so we're going to uncomment that. We'll turn on the speaker, and we're using the RipRap Discount Smart Controller, so we'll uncomment this line. If you are using the stock pins, again, if you uncomment the LCD support and the SD support, it's going to cause huge issues with the communication with the drivers. So only do this if you're following this configuration. Now on to configuration underscore ADV.h. And let's just do a find on 2130. So these settings are automatically enabled if you have set the previous configuration.h setting to 2130. So you shouldn't have to enable anything here. As far as values for each one of the drivers, I suggest you just go with default at the beginning. 
You might want to consider lowering these currents down to something like 600 if you have to, if you're having overheat problems. But for now, let's just stick with the default. And here's where you set up the software SPI. This is what makes this configuration work. So let's uncomment all four of these lines. And we need to assign a pin for each one of these to use. And if we pull up that diagram that we were looking at before, you can see the stock locations for the SCK, MISO, and MOSI pins are right here. We've got 50, 51, and 52. We moved these pins over to 40, 42, and 44. So those are the values that we're going to enter in the Marlin config. So for SCK, we used 40. Put a 40 right here. MISO, we used 42. 42 right there. MOSI is on 44. 44 right there. And that's all you should have to do to move those SPI pins. Now these settings override settings that are in your ramps pin file, but I'll show you more on that in just a moment. Now we continue on to configure the drivers. I'm going to use Stealth Chop because that's the mode I like the best. You could use Spread Cycle or Hybrid Cycle if you'd like. We're going to stick with Stealth Chop. I highly recommend that you uncomment motor driver status. This is going to give you information in the terminal about what the drivers are doing and it can really help you troubleshoot. If you're having issues with your drivers and it's throwing a lot of errors and everything stops working, you can uncomment this line so it doesn't stop on the error. It will just keep throwing the error. That's helpful for troubleshooting as well. So I'm going to set that there. We're not going to use hybrid threshold. That's where it does both spread and stealth chop based on demands. We are going to use sensorless homing. So we'll uncomment this line. And as we saw in the last video, it's a good idea if you're using sensorless homing to set home bump to zero. You don't want it to bump multiple times in this configuration. And the example for that is right up here. So we're gonna do define X home bump millimeter zero, and we'll do the same thing for Y home bump millimeter to zero. And you can comment out the Z homing sensitivity right here because we use a probe instead of an end stop. And then the last thing in this file is I recommend you uncomment TMC debugging. This can also help you when configuring your drivers. It'll give you some commands you can use, and I'll show you how to use those in a minute. Everything else can say default. Now let's head over to the ramps pin file. So we'll go to the dropdown, scroll all the way down. I'm using the standard ramps board, so pins underscore ramps.h. And if you scroll down, there's going to be a section labeled steppers. And here's where we can move the individual chip select pins. In the SPI, we just move the shared bus signals. Now we need to move the individual signal pins. And again, we'll go back to that diagram. So these are all the default pins. These are the ones that you're interested in right here. So for X, you can see the default pin was 53 right here. We moved it to pin 64. So in Marlin, 53 to 64. Chip select pin for Y. Default was 49 right here. We moved it to 66. Back to Marlin, 66. For Z, the default was 40. That's the one on the AUGS2 pin. It was right here. I moved it to 63. So 63. And the default chip select for extruder 0 was 42, which is right here. And I moved that to pin 59, right here. So we'll change that to 59. Now, like I was telling you before, these are the default software SPI pins right here. But if you set that in config underscore adv.h, it's going to override all these settings. So you should be good. And that's it. All of our pins have been moved. So let's go ahead and run a verify and make sure it works. And now if you're cable up to your board, we can go ahead and upload. So we'll hit tools, board, I'm on Omega 2560, correct processor, select the correct COM port, and then hit upload. Now the upload's complete, we can go ahead and start our testing on our drivers. There's a few more things I need to do real quick. Now all the wires for the 2130s are wired up, but nothing else. And if you're testing, you want to make sure that all your motors are plugged in while you're testing. Because if they're not, it's going to throw some really unusual errors and it might halt the board. Also, if you're just testing, you want to make sure you plug in a couple of thermistors because it will halt on thermal runaway if it sees a negative value. And because 2130s run really hot, I'm going to throw some heat sinks right on top of where the chip is. It's where all these little perforated dots are. All the heat sinks are on, so we're pretty much ready to install the board. But I also printed out this door that had a spot to put a 40 millimeter fan, because it appears that these drivers are going to have to have some active cooling so they don't complain. I'm just going to splice this in directly in my 12 volt feed. Well, I did manage to get it all back in the control box, but I have to tell you, it's a complete mess. 
If you want to install something like this, you're going to have to look at a little larger control box to get everything to fit. I do think I can make this work for this video with just a little bit of finesse, but definitely look at something larger if you want to install a 2130 setup correctly. Well, I powered it on and the LCD display is working, so that's a good sign. The thermistors are reporting correctly, that's also good. So we're still cabled up USB, let's get into Pronterface and do some test moves and make sure everything's still working. So we'll connect up. So it didn't automatically throw a bunch of errors for the drivers, so that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and slide an SD card in there just to make sure it'll initialize it. SD card OK, that's awesome. Let's do some test moves to make sure our drivers are working. Let's just go 10 up and Z. That looks good. Let's go 10 positive X. That looks good. How about 10 positive Y? That looks good. So all three axes look good. Let's see if it'll heat up. So both look like they're heating up. That's a good sign. Let's go ahead and set those to off for now. So that's looking good. Let's go ahead and hit Auto Home. And Auto Home was successful. Now, for in stopless homing, if it's going to your home position and not getting quite there, it's triggering before it needs to, you can use this M914 to increase or decrease the sensitivity. So if you did M914, let's just say X15, that would make that end stopless homing less sensitive. So if it's triggering before it gets to the end stop or it's not quite as snug as you'd like it to be, increase it. If it's not triggering at all, you want to decrease that sensitivity. So set it to something like 6. And then once you're happy with that setting, you can go back into Marlin and adjust it from there. Here's the spot in Marlin where you would set it permanently. Now let's talk about troubleshooting just a little bit. If you have monitor driver status enabled, you can use these commands up here to see what's going on with the driver. So let's just do an M122 to report the driver's status. This will let you know what's going on with the drivers, if they've triggered a warning or not. This is very handy to have. And you can do an M911 to report the driver status in case they've triggered a temp warning. All of ours are currently false and that's a good sign. But if you didn't get the wiring hooked up just right or something went wrong with one of the drivers, it's going to start throwing some errors. So let me pull one of the wires off the drivers for a second and I'll show you what it does. So I completely removed the cable off the Z driver and you can see it triggered this Z driver over temp warning and that's pretty confusing. The driver's not over temp, it just can't communicate with it anymore and that's not a really good error, but this is what it'll do. If you trigger one of these errors, you're not going to be able to recover with just a reboot most of the time. You're going to have to clear that error out. So what you need to do is go back and check your wiring and make sure everything's correct. I'm going to plug that back in now. So I plugged it back in. Let's go ahead and disconnect and connect again. And if we do that M911 again, they're all back to false. So that's good. It did reset it. You can see the M122. It's showing these are all false. It hasn't been triggered. But I've run into instances where you had to remove this error yourself. And back into Marlin, the command for that is right here. So if you want to clear that flag, do the M912. That will take everything back to stock and allow you to continue. I've had this hold me up before and it's really frustrating. So if you run into this, run an M912 and see if that lets you continue. And now all we need to do is run a test print and make sure everything's working successfully. I am going to leave this terminal window open in case the drivers throw any errors, but I'm going to print from the SD card now that we have an SD card reader. Print from SD. Benji time. The print's got the first couple of layers laid down and it's looking really good. The machine sounds great. So far, no errors in the terminal. Let's do an M122. No thermal warnings have been triggered. If you do M122 space S1, that will start active monitoring so you can see it in real time. You can turn it off with M122 S0. Just for fun, let's put our thumb on the electronics fan just to see if we get a temp warning. And it only took about a minute and a half to start seeing the driver over temp warnings. So we'll let the fan run. You can see it's lowering the voltage trying to get the temperature down. And then less than a minute when the fan comes back on, the temperature goes right back down and they're running just fine. If you do M911, we've still got the pre-worn true on E0. You can do the M912 to clear that out. And as long as that fan's running, it shouldn't come back. I'm going to call this upgrade a success. And that's it. Now you have 2130s, an LCD screen, and an SD card reader. 
Now, I know this was a lot of work, and not everyone's going to want to go through all this trouble just for some stepper drivers. But if you do want to upgrade to 2130s, I have to tell you that Stealth Chop is one of the most impressive 3D printing modes that I've ever seen. It is super quiet. And in Stopless Homing, that really opens up a lot of options for some really creative 3D printer configurations. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Check this out. Microphone on print bed. I'm not even kidding.